Hi everyone, welcome back to our channel. If you've never met us before, I'm Kimberlea and this is my boyfriend, Jonathan. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Today, we're answering all of your questions, well, most of your questions, all about our IVF experience, as well as outcome, issues, costs, anything we can think of in this video. And we'll also be showing you video clips, pictures, and the process of our journey on this fabulous wild ride. If you don't know us, I'm a true crime YouTuber. My main channel is above and in the cards. And we also have <laughs> your anxiety <laughs> like this. We also have a true crime channel as a couple together here on YouTube called Dark Livity. And now we have this channel all about our life for those of you that care to watch. But before we go on, just make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss out on other videos that we have in the future. Especially if you're on a similar journey with IVF or getting pregnant over 35 years old because we have many more videos to come. Oh, yeah. And if you haven't seen our video on how we met, we'll leave the link below. If you have any questions about us, I'm sure we've already answered them. It was like a two hour video. So I'm sure you can find anything you want to know. I like rewatching that video. I've watched it so many times. <laughs> I love it. So cute. So many of you have asked why we decided to do IVF. So I think that's a great place to start. And then also John and I can do our little alone segments answering with our own perspectives mm -hmm. as we go along. So the first question comes from Jazz9879, and it was, did age play a role in deciding to go through IVF? What do you think? That's pretty much the biggest reason I started researching because I wanted to know what I could do to have a child in the future. This was actually before John and I met and got together. But first and foremost, we have to let them know we're not doctors. This is not medical advice. This is just our story and all the information from our own research. Mm -hmm. So scientifically, if you don't know, women are born with the amount of eggs they'll ever have. You don't acquire new ones. So you already have all the eggs you'll ever have, and they deteriorate over time. But what's even crazier is that some women are born with low ovarian reserve from the beginning. They have a, how do you say it, smaller quantity of eggs. So if you don't start now and get assessed, it might be too late later. I have a 12-year-old daughter from a previous relationship that ended when she was under a year old. So I was a single mom for a while. And then at that point, I was already over 30. So I started thinking about options and how I could freeze my eggs for later. But it's not just about age. It's also about quality, which we found out over the course of this journey. And my biggest piece of advice is to get started now. If I could go back, I would freeze my eggs in my 20s. That would be an investment I would make instead of buying clothes and going out drinking. I would freeze my eggs because on average, whether you're on birth control or not, you lose up to a thousand eggs every month. Wow, that's so many eggs. I know, but how, well, you have like a lot though. I know, wow. It's like sperm almost. You have like, yeah. well, not as much Unless as sperm. the doctor said, I guess I have a lot. <laughs> Baby! <laughs> Take that out of there. So here's another question from Destover. D Stover? D, D Stover? D E Stover, 898. Her question was Younger family members that don't want kids in their 20s or know if they even want kids, she says she remembers at 25 feeling like that. She went on to say that she wonders if she even should start saving money to research IVF. She's seen women on TV saying, save their eggs. To answer that question, that was exactly what my intention was because I didn't have the opportunity because I was in a relationship that was rocky. I wasn't sure what my future held. And after spending many years in that relationship, I regretted not thinking of my future earlier, just safeguarding myself and making an independent decision aside from a man making a choice with me to at least freeze my eggs because I was turning 40 when John and I started dating. Because naturally, as we age, our egg count goes down and the quality of the eggs could go down, which means just naturally having a baby, there's a higher rate of miscarriage or genetic abnormalities. So that really worried me. I knew that there was a chance I'd still be fertile, but with advanced maternal age comes the likelihood of a lot more complications. So before John and I even got together, I decided that as soon as I had enough money, I was going to save my eggs. So after my breakup, 
That was really high on my list of priorities. In case I were to have met someone who came along and I wanted to marry and have kids with, and that means <laughs> <laughs> enter John. And to answer this next question, how did you find out IVF was a good solution? Um, do you want me to answer these by myself? And then you can jump in when we talk about like us having the conversation. Yeah, it doesn't give, matter. Give me a high five. Yeah. Okay, so to answer this next question, how did we know that IVF was a good solution? I didn't even really think about IVF. I considered egg freezing. And another one of you asked, was infertility a major problem between y'all or just an obstacle? But the truth is, I've never tried to have a child. And I don't think John's ever tried to have a child either. And what I mean by that is I've never been in a position where I was ever in a relationship that went to that stage. Neither one of us has ever been married so I've never had an opportunity where you sit down with your partner, you track your ovulation, you time sex at a certain time. I've never done that before. My daughter Shiloh was a complete surprise. So I've always dreamed, and maybe it's just a fairy tale, but I've always dreamed of getting married, being in love, and then making that decision as a couple. And that's what I wanted for me. And to answer this question by Jay Gold, just curious and feel free not to answer if it's too personal. Did you have IVF with your daughter? If so, have things remained pretty much the same since that process, or do you feel it's progressed? I did not do IVF with my daughter, and nothing is too personal as long as you're respectful when you ask it. But no, I knew nothing about this process. I was 29 when I got pregnant, and that process is a lot different than this, so I don't know how else to compare them, but to say the least, just keep watching and you'll find out. Um, so natural process is yeah <laughs> <obvious>. <laughs> I know but but going back I always wanted to freeze my eggs and I knew that was an option but because of circumstances in my life one being cost I did not get to a point where this was a possibility for me until last year in 2023 but I've been saving since about 2021 or so but I wasn't taking it seriously but my breakup was at the end of 2021 the beginning of 2022 and then John and I officially became a couple on March 22nd 2022 so Daria asked what made you guys decide to go this route and who initiated the conversation? And I will bring John back in for this. <laughs> Baby, this chair, this this thing's gonna fall. And I know <laughs> it. this is on like, Stilts. yeah, this is not safe at all. And as I gain weight with my pregnancy, I'm probably gonna fall through this no at some point. No way. It has fallen before. Well, it's not gonna fall anymore. Okay. I know I brought it up pretty early on because I was throwing it out there to him that I was thinking about freezing my eggs for the future because I didn't know what the future held. So it wasn't a really serious conversation. It was sort of like, I'm planning to do this, and that was just something personal for me. We didn't have like a conversation at all about it. Yeah, I, just, I was, when she told me that, I was like, great, do it, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, I was turning 40. So that was just an initial conversation. It wasn't a joint conversation. I was just letting you know this mm -hmm. is what I was gonna do. But I had no idea the kind of support I would need or, anything at this point because uh, again i was very oblivious to this entire procedure i thought i would just like go in and then i would like sit there and i would just get my eggs yeah that was pretty. <laughs> i thought it was like an in and out procedure no. not at all like that but i will say i did not do enough research that is something that i regret i wish i would have done a lot more research but you'll find out why and everything Haley asked how did you go about researching clinics in your area there are so many stories about unethical IVF inseminations. Was it hard to find a clinic or a doctor you trusted? Well, I wasn't really thinking about anybody's sperm being inseminated in me. That was the last thing on my mind. I just wanted to find a place close by that was reputable that could freeze my eggs. And my first venture into knowing how to get this done was actually just Googling, which is what most of us do. I knew nothing about this. I didn't even know it was a surgery. When I told you, I thought you would just like drop me off there. <laughs> I would get my eggs out and be like, I got eggs. <laughs> I had no idea how expensive it was, how delicate of a process it was. I had just seen it on social media, like people saying like, oh, I'm doing IVF. But I did know in some cases you had to have injections, but I thought that was only if you were going to like get pregnant. I didn't realize you would need injections mm -hmm. just to do your eggs. So, so a, a few months before we met, I had ordered a kit from this company called Modern Fertility. They have an at-home, like, blood test. It's very, very That's basic. That's the finger prick. Yeah. And I bought that. I ordered it. It came. And I even tried to have you do it for me. Yeah. It was in this little bag. 
I couldn't do it. I'm a big, you'll, they'll learn what a big baby I am, but I couldn't freak my finger. So that was a no, but it's about $179. You prick your finger, you send it in, and they give you the basics on whether or not you are fertile. But I would say if you're serious about freezing your eggs, going on this journey, you actually find a doctor, not like a random clinic or facility, but I know that some doctors work among other doctors. But what I'm trying to say is, you, you'll just understand why. <laughs> like watching this, find somebody that you, maybe your friend has gone to, maybe if you're watching a video like this and someone says they've had a great outcome, that's my biggest piece of advice. Oh, but you know how when you, you know how when you Google something though, and then when you go on YouTube or Facebook or anywhere else, you start seeing ads yeah, sure. for the same thing. So that was what was happening to me. I saw all these advertisements and I finally saw one for a place called Kind Body. Now, I want to point out, we're not trying to be negative about this specific clinic, but we are here to give our honest experience. So we're going to say right up front, we will not be using Kind Body in the future. This is just from our personal experience, and that is your choice. It might be great for someone else. Can I explain my thoughts yeah, about it? Yeah, of course. That's why we're here. The thing about Kind Body in my mind is, now, I may be totally wrong, but here's my assumption on how their process works. You know, venture capitalist comes in with, you know, somebody has the idea to start this venture. They give a bunch of money. They spend all the money on the marketing, the facilities. Everything looks so awesome. Mm -hmm. The portal, everything is really, really nice and modern. The big problem is I think they spent the most, most of their budget on aesthetics because the people who are actually doing the process are pretty young. And that's not to say that they don't know what they're doing, but I don't believe they have the proper experience that you know most of the older people that have been doing it for years do. I don't think that they are necessarily paying the type of people with experience. Now, that's not to say that within 10 years, that kind body won't be something amazing. But right now, I feel that they're in this trial phase where it's sort of a, a puppy mill, for lack of a better word, where they're testing out how to do all this stuff at a large scale. Yeah, they're a very modern day facility. The Like he said, the aesthetics, everything that's very inviting when you come in, that's like 10 out of 10. And as I went along, I started to realize things because I never looked up anybody's reviews on the clinic. I was just like, wow, this place is so modern. And I had a misconception that that meant like clean and modern meant successful. But my first step was actually back in September of 2022. And at that point, John and I had been together for six months and we hadn't talked about IVF, only about me freezing my eggs. So I saw the ad for Kind Body. I looked at the different locations. It was convenient. It was in our area. Everything was clean. They also had everything online, which is so convenient. It was relatively affordable. We're gonna get into costs considering this is an elective procedure. So I liked that their prices were transparent. It was like all on their website. I didn't have to guess on anything. And someone said that it, they're in Canada and they get one round covered by insurance. I couldn't see the rest of their question because it was cut off, but we both do untraditional jobs. We're entrepreneurs. We don't work for companies that give us insurance. And I didn't even have health insurance. I hadn't had health insurance for 10 years. I just got it this year. But most... IVF is not covered by your insurance. This is going to be something out of pocket. So you'd have to look in your specific location, but for the egg freezing consultation, it was $300. So I'm going to do this part alone because this was before him and I went on this journey together. So for my very first consultation, a nurse went over the entire process of freezing my eggs and what the future assessments would look like, where I was health-wise, to see what my fertility was going to look like, and of course, how much it was going to cost. Because right then and there, they want to evaluate whether you're serious about going forward because this is a long process. And I know I had a lot of questions about cost. One of you asked, how much does it cost? My dad said it cost him as much as my car, which they said was $15,000. And this is probably why I don't own a car because this is a lot of money. In this consultation at Kind Body, and I'll put it up on the screen, they told me that an egg freezing single cycle is anywhere between $6,400 up to $7,500. And that does not include medication. And medication 
is the most important part of this process other than the surgical retrieval part. The medications are separate. You have to buy them from a pharmacy. So that is going to be an additional cost and you can't freeze your eggs without the medication. So if you're doing this, you have to put that expense in up front. And medication is generally between $4,000 and $6,000. And all of this is gonna depend on your specific case. Because your doctor is gonna decide how much medication you need for your body to be stimulated. And how much that's gonna cost depends on your state, whether your insurance covers anything. But generally speaking, a good starting point is yes, it's about as much as a car. It's, I would say, to save anywhere between twenty and $25,000 before you think about freezing your eggs alone, just freezing your eggs. And there's a lot more to it. It's a medical procedure. You're going to have ovarian stimulation, transvaginal ultrasounds, blood draws, the egg retrieval process, and then egg storage. Not to mention that some of these blood draws, you're actually going to have to have things sent out to places like Quest Diagnostic, and they're going to bill you for that separately. And we're not even talking about IVF at this point. We're just talking about freezing eggs. So if you are, let's say, a single woman who wants to freeze her eggs for the future, or maybe you're a couple, but you're not at the stage where you want to get pregnant at that moment, this is a great option. And then later you can introduce your eggs, which now they would unfreeze, to sperm and then you can have a baby. And that was where I was at this moment. I was thinking, I'm gonna freeze my eggs for the future. And then one day after John and I get married, we'll decide the right timing for us to try to get pregnant. And we even thought maybe we would try to get pregnant on our own at that point. And if it didn't work, then I had eggs that were frozen and we could go through the IVF procedure. We had so many plans for what we wanted to do. We knew we wanted to be together. We knew at this stage in our relationship, both being I was 40 and he was 36, that we wanted to have a future together that might include having a child at some point. But I was on birth control. I was not trying to get pregnant. So after my consultation, I sat down with John and I told him everything that I learned. The nurse had also discussed the entire process, meaning not just the egg freezing, that's the first step, but then creating embryos. And we talked about whether my option should be going with just freezing the eggs or actually creating embryos and then freezing those. Because again, we were thinking about all the factors that go into this and she knew that I did have a partner. So that was discussed. Bunny Love 385 asked, when did you both know that you wanted children together? And another question is, what kind of dad do you think Jonathan will be? Well, he's not here in the room right now, but he will be editing this video. And he already knows, I think he would be a great dad because he's so funny and my daughter gets along with him so well. He also does everything for me. Like he's so helpful and kind and he's just wonderful. But let me bring him back in so we can go over these answers with you. <laughs> we actually had a tarot card reading. It was just for fun. Um, somebody that we were interviewing to like work for the studio, we had a tarot right. card reading and she had said in the tarot cards that we would have, she's like, well, I don't really want to say this. And I was like, well, no, tell me what's in the card. And she's like, it, well, it kind of says like, y'all are going to have a baby together, but we were just starting to date. Yeah. Like, I don't even think we talked about this far yet, but she's like, but it could, it could mean a baby as in a project. Mm -hmm. We've got a few of those going as well, <laughs> but she wanted to know. When did we know we wanted to have children together? And what kind of dad do you think Jonathan would be? I already said that I thought you'd be a great dad because you're funny and you're caring and you do a lot of things for me. And I know that you would be the same way with baby. But I don't think we had, like, I don't think there was a part where we were like, we want to have children together. I don't think that we ever had that. Well, we did, didn't we? That's why we kind of started doing IVF. And you wanted to save your eggs, but then suddenly we... Switch her, like, you know what, let's just do embryos. Well, we knew we wanted to be together, so we were thinking in the future, we, but, we, but we weren't saying, like, let's have a baby right now. Right. We were saying, we think... Let's have a baby later. Right. Like, <laughs> we were like, this is great. We can choose. This is great for couples who are even, like, even if you're not as old as we are, but just like, oh, we want to do this. Yeah. So around the six-month mark, we talked about possibly having kids in the future. I explained to you at dinner. We were at, we were at Rock. We were at, no, we were at Brewport. And I came in and I explained all about my consultation. But I told him that there's also the option where instead of freezing the egg and introducing sperm later, you do it in the lab 
and you make embryos and then you freeze those. Right. Once she said that, I think I asked, what is the better idea? Is what's more effective, saving the eggs, then introducing insemination or creating the embryo and freezing that? And I think the embryo route is more viable, right? It depends, but usually they say it is just because they're already doing it. And then you know that you it's like they already created it. What, what it really comes down to also is like, it also matters how old the guy is. Like the guy's sperm also deteriorates. So doing it earlier than later is another good option. Right. But what really made sense is I was already going to go through all the medications, yep. all the injections, getting the eggs out. So you're going to have to go through that again. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so it just made more sense that we were going to just... Go ahead and do it all at once. And then we were going to split the cost. So that's another thing. Like if you wanted to make it more affordable, I guess. But people who have like, who are married probably have like one income anyway. Or like, you know, they're putting it together. But also it kind of cuts down on the cost because you're doing it all at once. Right. So we'll get into that. Kim W. 8166 asked, I hope it's not too personal, but I'm almost 42. I never really considered having kids until my current relationship, so it's something I might have to consider, and they both want a child now. So it, it is true. The older you get, these are things you start thinking about. Well, at Kind Body, the price is anywhere between 15000 to 19000 for embryo freezing. So the price does jump up, but you're already going to do everything, the genetic testing, uh, but that's also not including medications. So just, just know. You also have to have a semen analysis. John will discuss that aspect of it all. But when Shelly asked, how long did you try to get pregnant before you had to use IVF? Had to use IVF is interesting because we didn't try to get pregnant. We just wanted to do family planning for the future. But after we decided to go the embryo freezing route, I still had to go back for an assessment because at this point, I had no, I had never been assessed before. I had no idea what my fertility was like. And that was November 13th, 2022. And I had been off birth control for a month at that point. So to answer Sina Bina's question that said, I'm a mama who's looking into having IVF in the future. What should you expect coming into it? Like what are the steps and how long is the process? And I would say the process can be about a year to get started. It really depends how ready you are, if you've saved enough money. An actual cycle is one month. Mm -hmm. So generally speaking, you could do a cycle every month, but you just have to remember every cycle is about $20,000 and you can only retrieve eggs once every month. So you're going to be stimulated and then you're going to ovulate and they're going to grab the eggs. So at Kind Body, your first assessment is called a pulse assessment. This is $99. This is where I came in and they're going to talk about my fertility. And I want to be clear that going into this, I never considered myself infertile. We were doing this because I thought I was fertile and I was planning for our future because we were not ready to have a child in that moment. So for one of you, username help me my spaghetti, the rest is cut off. They asked about my choice on IVF instead of other methods. And then they talked about Kourtney Kardashian, how she did some kind of cleanse. I don't watch the Kardashian, so I know nothing about her story, but I know they did try IVF, I believe. We went into IVF because we weren't ready at that moment to get pregnant. And my mom had had kids in her 40s. So in my mind, I didn't even consider myself anywhere near infertility, but just wait because the plot thickens. So at this first appointment, an ultrasound technician is going to do a vaginal ultrasound and they're going to count the number of follicles in your ovaries. But the tricky part is that does not mean that's the exact amount of eggs you're going to have. Every month, your ovaries release an egg. And if you don't have it fertilized through intercourse, then you get your menstrual flow. The follicles are where the eggs come out of. So you can think of it as all the little follicles on your arm where hairs come out, but there could be a follicle there where hair doesn't come out. So just because you have them there doesn't mean that you have an egg there, but it's a good way for them to estimate how many eggs you'll be able to get harvested. I'm going to put something up on the screen, and this is just an estimate of how many follicles you usually have at certain ages. So someone 25 to 34 years old has 13 to 25 follicles. If you're 35 to 40, usually have 10 to 15. If you're 41 to 45, three to 10. And then over 46, zero to three follicles. 
And I'm not trying to be depressing, but as you can tell, as you age, your follicles reduce, and that's why our chances of getting pregnant reduce. Infertility, when it comes to the amount of follicles you have, if you have six to 10, that's usually an acceptable amount. A count less than six is considered low ovarian reserve. So I wasn't sure what to expect, but to my surprise, I'm showing it on the screen, I had 14 follicles showing. There were 14 observed, and if you have an amount within the teens to about 20, that's a really good indication of a good ovarian reserve or a good amount of eggs. But you have to remember that every month this varies, so they always tell you it's like plus or minus five. So that meant when you're observing 14, I could have anywhere between like really have like eight to 20. It just really depends. At this appointment, you also get a blood test, and that's really important because they're looking for a specific hormone in your blood called AMH, that's the abbreviation. This is released by the eggs as they grow, and it's one of the most reliable measures of your ovarian reserve. One to four is considered normal. Under one is considered low. At my first appointment, mine was a 3.16. So again, I thought this was a great sign that I was gonna get pregnant, I'm fertile, and I was doing great for my age. But I'm just gonna let you know, spoiler alert, by the end of this video, I'm gonna be told by Kind Body that I am infertile, <laughs> okay? <laughs> I'm, he's right over here. I'm infertile. So to answer Tracy's question, after you spoke about IVF, how long was it before you decided to give it a try? So after I got my results back, John and I knew we wanted to wait till after the holidays to get started. We wanted to be in a place of less stress. We knew that the holidays could be kind of hectic, and I was actually moving in with John at the time. So you usually don't want to do a lot of life-altering events all at once. And it was already November at the time. And then once we moved into your place, we ripped out the carpets. Yep. We redid the kitchen. So a lot was going on. Mm -hmm. And I, we also have pets. Right. And my daughter. As you know... I would think from what I've learned from all of your research is, you know, low stress is the best for, well, really anything in life, yeah. really. But especially for people trying to become pregnant or even going through IVF, they were always saying, try to be the least stressful time of your life. Which is hard because we have a stressful type of career that we decide to go into. So there's always something going on. Yeah. And my next appointment was February 26th of 2023. And that's the real beginning of this entire process. This is when the doctor looked at my numbers and then decides our plan. And I just wanna point out that my initial consultation for this whole process that I'm talking about was on Zoom. It was actually over a phone call. Yeah. And quite frankly, I did not like this idea. I wanna see a doctor in person. I want them to know what I look like. I wanna talk to them face to face. And this is where Kind Body I feel is a zero, like a zero stars, because I think it's really inappropriate for something this expensive, this delicate, this important in your life. This intimate? Yeah, to be over the phone. Like, it's just, I think that they either need more practitioners to have more time to see the patients. I have never met my doctor. No. And remember I said this was a surgical procedure? I have never met my doctor. So just keep that in mind as we go through this process. During we, during her surgery, she decided to go on vacation. Right. <laughs> and so I had to have, well, we'll get there. Yeah, we'll you know, get there. We want to surprise you with that whole experience. We'd only spoken over Zoom and over the phone. But to be fair, she looked at my chart, which included my age, my AMH, my follicle count. And she got a plan together based on that. She also said that at this age, it's better to do it now. And we were already ready. So I'm like, okay, let's just put on the books. Let's get our appointment scheduled. And, but she also gave me advice. She said between then and the time we did the retrieval, I could do things that could improve my chances. Not to say I did them. I didn't. I'm honest. Like, I didn't do a lot of the things I should have. But there are ways to have a better outcome. Mm -hmm. We got a question from Laura AM 22, and she said she was going through IVF herself, and she's 38 with low AMH, and she was wondering what my most helpful advice at that stage is. She's at the stim stage. That's like a, that's going to be further in the process. That's when you're actually being stimulated by injections. But I definitely have a lot more advice later on, but 
I'm going to put up on the screen the advice I got back from my doctor, which is really great advice to start out with. One of them was diet. Diet, vitamins, low stress. Yeah, the Mediterranean diet was what they usually recommend, which is fruits, vegetables, healthy fats, avocado, olive oil, poultry fish. I'm a vegetarian for the most part. I will eat fish um, and meat here and there. Like, I don't eat meat on a regular basis. I definitely don't eat red meat. But I'm also not a good eater. I like to eat a lot of junk food, candy. I'm not somebody to get <laughs> tired and exercise advice from at all. And genetically speaking, I am what I am. Like, I'm a small person genetically. My parents were too. I was a gymnast growing up. So that helps. Muscle you have memory. Muscle memory, yeah. But I don't eat a lot of food, but I don't eat the best food. Mm -hmm. And Very exercise true. is really important. She said maintaining a healthy BMI is really important. But supplements, I will say supplements are important. And I am going to get to that in one minute. But like he said, managing stress. So we started making a habit of going in the hot tub at night. Mm -hmm. and But then we found out that's not good for sperm count. And <laughs> it's not good for like the heat is not good. But it was nice. And you might want to do like acupuncture, meditation, walking. Anything to reduce your stress. Yeah. Anything that's going to make you feel better. My doctor didn't say that supplements were going to dramatically change the outcome. But if I had to go back, I would give myself like three months to be on supplements before and I'm going to put everything down below, but the most important ones are CoQ10, and I'll put it down below, DHEA, a prenatal vitamin that had folic acid in it, and I will give you the ones that I use, but I will say, later on, I bought different vitamins and supplements, but these are just fine. These are acceptable. This is what most doctors are going to recommend, and I got them on Amazon, and I don't like swallowing pills. So I got like the chewables and the liquid ones, which were fine and they were great. The next thing we had to do is we had to get a major blood test. So this is where they're gonna tell you your blood type, your platelet count, your hemoglobin, your STD test, everything you wanna know about your body. And for women, they're gonna tell you your AMH again, your, your, how do you say it? your progesterone, I hope I'm saying that right, and your hormone levels. You have to do this test before you go forward because they're gonna give you an overall view of your health and your fertility and chances of success. So, and then, and then what else did we do? Oh, they should know you're going to get a lot of vaginal ultrasounds. Just letting you know now it's the long wand and it's much more accurate. But in case you're wondering, you'll do that on every appointment going forward and you're going to have a lot of appointments. So I called him because I got my results that day. And they said my numbers, my numbers had dropped both follicles and my AMH, it had been six months since my first test. And they said, now my AMH was at 1.72, which is a bit surprising and concerning. And I felt a lot of pressure at this point because I was like, oh my gosh. And my egg count was five. I went from 14 to five. And I was like, is this real? Yeah. Like, is this real? I questioned it. I was like, did they get me mixed up with someone else? Because it seems like so now I jump on the phone with a doctor and she's like, yeah, we only saw three on one side and two on the other. And like I had said, like under 10 is a low ovarian reserve. So I don't know how in the world I went from 14 to five, but we were like, we got to get on this. And she mm -hmm. even told me, she was like, you're probably only going to get two. Right. So I was like, well, you know, two is better than zero. So I said, let's just go for it. So we were looking at summertime. Keep in mind. For $20,000, you may only get two or one or none. And then, just so you know, there's no guarantee that putting the sperm and egg together, that it's going to turn into an embryo. This is all by chance. It's science. It doesn't always work. And then after you do make embryos, you have to get them genetically tested. And that's a whole other process. You don't have to. No, you do. Oh, you do have to? Yeah. It's like, by law, they Here need to. Here it get... is. I, oh, there's, okay. some, there's some places that... I mean, I would recommend you do. 100%. But, I, yeah. Here, you have to get them genetically tested in California. I don't know a place that doesn't do that. Well, in New York, I know a place that won't. To answer these questions that we're going to put up on the screen, a number of you asked, how many times until you become pregnant? One person said that they know someone who did it several times. And someone else said, how many attempts before it's successful? 
And XOXO0603 XOX asked, how many did you guys do before getting a positive? And she said, I've done two tries myself and then it cut the rest off. Melissa asked, I wanted to know how many cycles it took for y'all. I can only imagine how nerve wracking it is to have to wait. Um, and then she went on to say it basically never happens on the first try. But I want you to know, I didn't know that it doesn't usually happen on the first try. I just went into this thinking, well, I'm fertile. I'm just preserving our future. Yeah, I was under the impression this was just going to be really easy. Another big question we got is one from YPIE425 that asked, did you pick the sex of the baby and Sunny Moonbeam asked, can you choose a boy or a girl doing IVF? And Queen to Five King said, gorgeous parents like you. The baby's going to take breaths away. I'm so excited for you guys on your IVF journey. Do you get to pick the gender? Would you like to explain? You get to pick the gender. You do, uh, sort of. You don't really get to pick the gender. Well, right. When you get your embryos, that is what you get. It may be two girls, maybe two boys, maybe a girl and a boy, maybe however many, or maybe zero. So depending on what is fertilized and is actually working, that's what you get to pick from. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's sort of a luck of the draw. But yeah. You get to pick what you get. So gender, I had to learn this. It comes from the sperm. It doesn't come from the woman. We have an X chromosome, and they have sperm that either has an X or a Y. So it all depends on what you give to get fertilized because— And what I learned is the older a man gets, the chances of a boy is slimming. Yes. The older we get as men, we really only produce girls. You start to produce more girls. So it's either going to be an X or Y— and that's something you're going to know right away because when you get the form, when you get your results, uh, it's going to say it. You're going to know. It's going to, I'll show, well, we'll show our results later on, but it'll tell you XX or XY. And then as you go through this process, when you bank those embryos, you get to decide in what order would you like to have it? Would you like to have a boy and then a girl? So that is one of the biggest reasons people like to do IVF. I mean, also because of infertility, but family planning. And to each their own. Some people think that that's playing God, but they're your they're your babies, essentially, like future babies. <laughs> they're embryos. But I think that's fine because it's coming from us and we get to decide. But you can't choose how many babies you're going to have, right. so to speak. That's up to chance. The amount of eggs that they retrieve is only the beginning, and we're going to get to that. So at this point, we found out we're both typo positive blood type. Yeah. And compatibility actually matters, but that has more to do with ge the genetic side of things. Ryan RA44 asked, did you check his sperm motility before doing IVF? Yeah, the kind body made us do that stuff during the blood tests uh, before actually going into the actual process of, you know, injections and all that. They made sure that is this even viable with my sperm. So I did go through that process. And men's, Multiple times. And men's sperm deteriorate. It can be slower, abnormally shaped. Uh, so all of that does play a big part in this entire process if you're introducing sperm. So that semen analysis is done, and John passed with flying colors. The woman was even making jokes. I don't know if people think that's inappropriate. We didn't really care, but she came on to speak to us about it. She was like, oh, you no problem in that department. Um, I can't even tell you the numbers. They're crazy. But we didn't have any problems there. Uh, do you want to briefly, briefly tell them about the process of that? Because people want to know. Yeah. Uh, do you want me, to well, move, want me to say it yourself? So Kimber and I go to Kind Body, and we're sitting on the couch. And then a gentleman comes up to me and escorts me into a room with a bunch of paintings and pictures of stuff a lot of space stuff in there and then there's a couch dressed with what looks like pee pads for dogs and he says go ahead and sit here and i look at the tv that is in front of the couch and it's a corn hub <laughs> and i'm like okay so he's like well you know what to do here i said sure <laughs> and he leaves so i use my imagination and I put a sample into the little bin and go about my day. 
Because you didn't want to use Pornhub or whatever. You, you, they gave you a lot of options, right? Like different options. <laughs> yeah. Uh, of, of corn? I'm looking at Cornhub and I'm thinking, like, spiritually, do I want to make this via, you know, a selection of corn or use my imagination? Once I finished up, I took my sample and put it into the bin and uh, I walked out to an empty hallway and sat back down on the couch and awaited Kimber to come back with, I believe, your blood test. People always ask about that part. When I see Q&As on, online, everyone's like, well, what do the guys have to do? Yeah. How do they get it done? It's it's it could have been done anywhere, you know? We're pretty easy creatures. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. Then after this step, they do oh, we already said that. They did our genetic testing. Yeah. So it was actually pretty fascinating because we all have susceptibility to some types of genetic disorders, and there's so many of them. I think they tested us for like 400. And if you're gonna do IVF, it's really important because if like I have a susceptibility to celiac, but I only have like one chromosome. But if you had the other chromosome, right. then our child would have celiac. So it's just really good to know. Not that they would have celiac, there's just a higher likelihood. But luckily when we got our results back, we didn't have any that were the same. As they say, it takes two to tango. Yes, so we didn't have any genetic conditions. There's a lot of them, but the ones you hear about the most in IVF are like the trisomies, like the trisomies mm -hmm. 18s, the 21s. Uh, and a lot of those things have to do with dwarfism, Down syndrome. Yeah, a lot of intellectual disability. and Yeah, it takes maybe a week or so. So there's a lot of waiting in this process. That's the hardest part is just waiting. But after we did that, we thought we would be starting soon, but then they told me I needed a mammogram. If you're over 35 or over 40, in some areas, depending on your state, you will have to go get a mammogram before you do IVF. And there's a lot of reasons for this, but the biggest reason is because you are going to put a lot of hormones into your body. And unfortunately, that can cause a lot of problems. I'm not gonna get into the specifics on this, but you have a higher risk of breast cancer when you're going through IVF because you're putting a lot of estrogen and other hormones into your body. And I had a friend that went through IVF and got breast cancer. And it's, yes, you should always get checked before you do this. And they make you do it. They won't go forward with this unless you get a mammogram. And I went to Bedford Breast Center in Beverly Hills. And they were really great. That's why I just wanted to tell you where I went in case you're here in Los Angeles. I had a really great experience. Everything that I've heard about it, like hurting and it being crazy, it wasn't any of those things. However, when I got another, this is just another thing that happened during the process and why it's so stressful is that they told me they found something. Remember, mm -hmm. got my results back. They were like, you need to come back in because we found something on one of your breasts. And I was like, oh my gosh. And that's, somebody asked on here, Haley asked a question about how many people close to us did we tell about what we were going through or whether we you know, kept it close. And she said we mentioned on Instagram pretty early on, but I feel like we actually didn't mention it too early on because I was looking back and I was like, no, we we're already kind of in it yeah. by the time we started telling anyone anything. But it is really stressful. And that's why we t did tell close friends and some of our family members. But you kind of do want to keep this to yourself. It's a really emotional experience. You're already going through it with your partner. Yeah, yeah. And there's a lot of, there's something, there's something to be said about putting something out into the world and having people react on it could sort of, I don't know if you're into, you know, energy and stuff like that, but, you know, having what, you know, the collective thought of like, ooh, I'm so happy for you guys, or I hope it doesn't work, or, you know, stuff like that, I really do believe plays into your psyche if you're hearing it, it from does. other people. So it's kind of nice to keep it, you know, between us, because after all, it is for us and us yeah. only. I didn't want to share after the first time. Like, we have a story after the first time and after this time that we're telling you about, I decided not to share after that because it was really stressful. It's it's a letdown in a lot of ways to see comments or just it makes your mind, I don't know, like not everyone's happy for you. Not everyone understands. Trying to trying to explain it was confusing because people associate IVF with having a baby. Right. So people are like, oh my gosh, we're so excited you're going to have a baby. And we're like, we're banking, <laughs> we're banking embryos for our future. We're not having a baby. Well... 
<laughs> at the t- at that time, we weren't planning to have a baby in that moment, but we kept a lot of things to ourselves. And I remember how scared I was when I had to go in for the second mammogram, but everything was fine. It was just the way that the s- scan was taken, and that sometimes happens. One of you, Samantha Jacobs 699, had asked, how are you feeling emotionally going through this process? And are you considering freezing eggs for future pregnancies? Yes, we want to freeze more embryos for future pregnancies, but throughout this process and maybe some future videos, you'll know how things were going emotionally. But you're really excited in the beginning. You're like, this is new. And then you're worried. And then what are some of the other things you were feeling? Her stress was so through the roof because she's the type of person that needs to understand what the future has in store for her. And if she can't dictate her future or understand what's happening, all she's going to do is worry. So, you know, upon initial injections, do you think it worked? Do you think it took? We don't know. So that's just going to heighten her stress. So it's, you know, it's important to keep your stress low. So finally, by May 1st, one month before the month of our retrieval, because we had scheduled it for June, I went in for another baseline ultrasound and blood draw, which again was assessing my AMH, my follicle count, and my results went up a little bit, Mm -hmm. maybe from being off birth control, maybe from the supplements, but it was now a 2.54 from a 1.7, and my egg count was higher too. I think there was at least 10, Yeah, which means five or even two or three that you're going to actually get. And the simplest way I can explain this is that you're going to be put to sleep and there's a probe that's going to be put in your vaginal canal into your ovaries. Your eggs are microscopic, so they can't, like a doctor can't see them and go, oh, I'm just going to pick them out. The medications make them bigger. And then the probe has a vacuum suction on the end of it and it sucks out the liquid that's inside your ovaries. And they're hoping they get as many eggs as possible, but that's the point of stimulating them because they make them bigger Mm -hmm. and then they can suck them out more easily. But it's a very delicate process and we'll go over that. So we were looking at June for our IVF. It was June 20th for the retrieval, but June 1st, they did a priming visit. And then June 9th, they told me that that's when we were going to start the injections, the medications, because they wait for you to get your period. Mm -hmm. That's the start of your cycle. On my priming check on June 1st, they prescribed me estrogen pills that I had to take in the morning and at night, so two times a day. And since my AMH was over a two, they said that I would respond good to medications, which is good because that's what you're going to be getting, a lot of medications. So my birthday is June 7th, and John, before we knew that we were going to be doing the retrieval, he planned a getaway. It was a secret. I didn't know where we were going. She mentioned an Instagram post that she saw from somebody she follows. And she's like, oh, my gosh, I want to get my photos taken with cactus. And I was like, oh, okay, that's a good idea. I said boots and cactus. Oh, yeah, boots and cactus. Boots and cactus. He always boots knows the cactus. best things. <laughs> he always boots knows the best things to do. And so he had, we estimated that we would be visiting. We estimated that my visit was going to be June 9th. Okay, so he had scheduled our trip from June 6th to like June 9th or something because we were like, oh, we'll go for a few days and then we'll come back. Yeah. But that is not what happened. Because as soon as she gets her period, we have to go. We have to go and we have to start the injections. So Aunt Flo came into town on the 5th, which was a day before our trip. And I was like, oh, no. And I was so upset, but we still went. It was just, here's here's me explaining it on Instagram in the moment. So it has been one of those crazy weeks when <laughs> everything's kind of all over the place. And I wanted to come on because I was supposed to be vlogging this, but there was no time to really vlog it. So I'll just have to save this video. But uh, my birthday is on Wednesday. <laughs> and this is the same week that we we're supposed to have our first appointment for my fertility treatments. I've already been on the estrogen pills but I was supposed to go in for my first cycle visit, which they estimated would be Friday because, you know, Aunt Flo had to come into town. But that happened today. And we're supposed to be leaving for our trip tomorrow morning for my birthday. And it's a surprise. I don't know where we're going. And Shyla's fifth grade commencement is on Thursday. And it's just, it's been a lot. I have broken nails. <laughs> this is just, it's great. It's just, it's life. It is what it is. But I'm excited, but I'm also scared. And then I don't know what's going to happen because... 
they're supposed to like overnight me a whole bunch of injections and we're not going to even be here. And I'm just like, so when you're doing these, this whole process, you have to call in and say like, hi, you know, um, I got my period. So I just did that. And I'm sitting there on hold. I'm like waiting. I'm like, what am I going to do? Because I don't know what they want me to do now. I don't know if they just want me to, I, I have no idea. I'm so all over the place. Plus I'm like, how am I going to get my overnighted injections if I'm all the way in another place two hours away? I don't know. I'm just waiting. And I figured I would come on and tell you the update. Yeah. When the injections come, we have to start those immediately when they come. So I'm just like, wow, I wasn't expecting it. I was just, my mind was set for Friday. Like I said, I'm excited. I'm scared. I'm freaking out on everything, but uh, I'll keep you updated. I'll tell you what they say when they call. I have no idea. One thing I forgot to mention, this morning I woke up and John and I were just waking up and I go, I've been in my body for almost 41 years. <laughs> this is literally word for word what I said. I've been in my body for almost 41 years now and I can always feel when I'm about to get my period. And I think I'm gonna get it tomorrow morning and I even said, or today sometime. About an hour later, <laughs> I was right. I knew it. I freaking knew it. I knew it. Oh my God. What a complete crazy morning I've had so far. Got my lashes done. So that's taken care of. I was sleeping so soundly. It was amazing. It was so relaxing. It's probably the only time I actually get to relax <laughs> during the day. No lie. So I look forward to those appointments just so I can get like a really good sleep. It's so, so nice. But I just heard back from Kind Body and it looks like we're going to run in tomorrow morning, do my appointment, blood work, ultrasound, see where everything is at that point. And then I will start injections that night or Wednesday night. And I believe they're going to overnight me all of the injections. And then I will show you all of the injections, John and I had to learn how to use them. He's going to be doing the injections. I'm really terrified of needles, not going to lie. I came on for an update on what's going on. So, oh, it's been a day. It's been a crazy day. So as of now, my medications, all the injections are being sent here today. Same day shipping. They're coming between... 6 p.m. and 11 p.m. So I can't film today because I have to sit here and wait for my medications. So I'm going to be doing that. And then tomorrow morning, bright and early in the morning, we have an appointment, blood work, ultrasound again, and I will be starting my injections on my birthday, June 7th on Wednesday, the night we get back from our trip. So that's the update, me waiting again. That's it for now. There's nothing to report. But when everything gets here, I will show you what we got. So that should be exciting. Come to like an unboxing a little bit. So the medications were sent on June 5th, same day delivery. We went through MDR Pharmacy and I highly recommend them if you live in LA. And I'm going to be transparent because people asked about the cost. It came out to $5,550.97. That was for my medications. But before we got the medications, we went on a Zoom call with a nurse and she showed us how to do the injections, how to prepare the syringes, how to put the needles on, how to get the bubbles out, you know, all the things that you need to do. I had never been injected by somebody other than a medical professional, and he... I've never injected somebody. <laughs> so we had a lot to learn. And to be honest, I do not like needles. <laughs> how bad do I not like... Well, <laughs> after this process, I have to say, I feel differently. Trusting somebody else to inject you is a big deal. I know people probably think I'm being a baby because there's people out there who have to take um, insulin injections, you know, all kinds of things. But I'm not used to it. So you have to give me like a little benefit of the doubt, you know, it just, it's, I don't, I didn't know and I'm scared. I don't like needles. But um, I would definitely categorize myself as someone that has a fear of needles going into this. But we're going to tell you all about that. But first, I was given the estrogen tablets took them in the morning at night, and this helps thickening your uterine lining. And then I want to show you the unboxing of our medications. He's mad because he just probably, <laughs> did you just, <laughs> I think he might have told me where we're going on accident, but no, right? Because, no, no. yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah? No, yeah. He was asking me, oh, when are we going to start doing it? When we're, 
in Joshua Tree. <laughs> anyway, I guess it might be where we're going, but we'll just have to wait and see. It'll be everybody's surprise. Mm -hmm. This is our lovely box of goodies. So right here, um, looks like some syringes and whatnot. I'm going to take it out. It just, it's got like personal information on it. So I didn't want to just take it out, but lots of syringes and things like that. Alcohol swabs. And then we get into more of the medications and the injections and stuff. So I'm going to take that out. And then this part is the part that needs to be refrigerated. So there's that. Are you ready to do injections? So they give us, this is all the medicine. So that's the men up here. We learned all about this. Remember, baby? Oh, yes. We've got the pen. We have another, I think, pen in here. We have to open this immediately because it's refrigerated and needed. And then all of these have different needles for the different meds. So this one goes with that one. And it's kind of like color coordinated, which I think is kind of cool. Maybe not, but there's the thing there. And then we have these syringes that go with Omnitrope, which is that? Is that Omnitrope? No, but that's something else. And then we have these. There's just a lot of syringes and whatnot. And then they give you this little sharps container that you have to get rid of all your needles in. And then this is the refrigerated one, which we have to keep track of the refrigerated ones. We know which one it is. So there are some of the vials right here that have to be refrigerated. And then these are additional cartridges for another pen that we have. So there's all these as extra. So that's, that's all the stuff. So on the very next day on June 6th, the same day that we we're leaving for our trip, we went to an appointment that morning. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember that. I do. Okay. So here's a video of me explaining what we had to do the morning of our trip. I'm in the middle of getting ready. I just figured I would give you an update. I had my doctor's appointment this morning, did the blood draw, did the ultrasound. They said they see eight eggs there. Um, that was more than we had before. So that was good news. And then I'm waiting to hear back when we start the injections. It's either going to be tonight or tomorrow, but I just wanted to let you know because I know a lot of you have said you want to follow the story, so there you go. Other than that, I'm just looking at my puffy hair right now. I'll do a little straightening action in a minute and start filming this video. So we had eight eggs that day, and this was all before medications. So we left for our trip. We were excited. We only got to stay like one night. Right. And everything was so fabulous. We're gonna put pictures up on the screen. We did a photo shoot. He did a photo shoot of me, but we also did one together. Yeah. I keep forgetting, like, I need to post more of these photos. But the Airbnb was so awesome. I highly recommend it. I'll leave the information below. It's a gorgeous area. It was full of amenities. We went in the hot tub at night. We did the photo shoot the next day. There were cool coffee shops. We went to a little, like, coffee and bagel restaurant. And I also think it was nice to have a little vacation before IVF. That's the main point, trying to bring her stress down, but I think it only induced more stress. <laughs> no, it didn't. I, was, I wasn't I was that stressed. Well, I was only stressed. Because we had to go and leave. Yeah, but yeah. it's sort of like having a baby moon. When people have a baby moon, like instead of a honeymoon, it's a baby moon yeah. before giving birth. So I'd highly recommend that you do that. But we did have to cut it pretty close. We couldn't enjoy it as much as we wanted to. But when we got back on June 7th, we had to start the injections for the first time in. Boy, was that an experience. <laughs> I'm going to put up on the screen the message I sent to the nurse the day after. I'm going to put that up on the screen. We definitely are going to give you a lot of details into this, but okay. So to be fair, I was, wasn't I trying to do it myself? No. Yes, I was. I was trying to do it myself first because I were? got scared. Yeah. Okay. So I put on music. I... I was sitting on the bench. She I didn't. turned the lights low. She put spa music on. I had never done this before, but she I knew. She put candles on. Yeah, and eventually those things helped me. Never, yeah. But prepping everything and like looking at the needle was starting to annoy me. Like it was just getting in my head. Because I mean, whatever. Yeah. Okay. You're about but, to put this serum inside of your belly. Exactly. And it definitely took me three hours. Three hours. No exaggeration there. But I will tell you something. So some of these injections, we're going to go into detail, but some of these injections have to be refrigerated and some of them don't. Just just trust me on this. If you leave them out longer, they hurt more. So if you're about to, if you're, if you mix your syringe and then you don't use it and you're waiting three hours, it burns so much worse. So if you're not ready, keep that stuff unmixed because you have to mix a lot of these. 
Trust me. Just trust me on that. So we're going to give you a little sneak peek of what's to come because this video has been pretty long. We haven't gotten to all of your questions yet. There is going to be part two, maybe even more. We're going to make a playlist called IVF Journey here in the cards. You can find it below in the description box. And in the next part, we're going to start with the moment we got those injections. We'll go into the retrieval, and then we'll also tell you our outcome, which some of you might already know. Um, but I really do want to go into detail about the medications, and I don't want to rush through that part. That's why I want to save it to next time. But here is a sneak peek of everything you're going to see. <laughs> Chasing you. Chasing you through the desert. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Hot. It's hot. And he's gotta, you gotta make sure all the... Baby, you're not supposed to open them with your mouth. Your mouth has bacteria in it. <laughs> don't, follow, don't follow this. Um, don't follow this example. Ready? No, baby, I'm not. No, okay, baby. Y'all, his hands are not dirty. <laughs> his nails make it look like like they. <laughs> what do they say about the needles from the thing? It's at the. Here we go. No, 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 so. baby. Wait a minute. Oh my god. They said the one needle was from the back. No, the back. The back alley. You're the back alley. You're the back alley doctor. This is the back alley doctor. <laughs> okay, today's the day. We are on our way to my appointment. I have to be there between like 6, 6.15 to check in, get ready, and then the anesthesiologist will come in and I will go for a nap. <laughs> and the world will go on while I am napping. And then they will retrieve as many eggs as possible. I did get a doctor switch last night, was which was a little bit of a mm -hmm. shock. I am done. Put some orange juice. Didn't feel a thing. I feel so relaxed. Yeah. It went really well. So we're so glad you're here following our journey. We're hoping that this these videos help you with mm -hmm. your future journey. Yeah. Hope it's been informative. Hope it's educational. And we hope you learned something. So thanks for watching this video. Thank you and, so much. Uh -huh. We hope you subscribe, hit the notification bell, and we should be getting one out every week. Yeah. And also don't forget to check out our other channels, which we will have on the front page of this channel. And thank you so much for caring about our journey and caring about us and yeah. giving us a lot of congratulations and other things that you've been seeing if you follow us on Instagram. But stay tuned for yes, what's to come. Stay tuned. Bye.